There's a reason Games Workshop chose the Ultramarines as their poster boys. Reliable, trustworthy, and of course, crazy popular. But did you know that for 6,000 years, people have been making and painting things with the color blue? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you might do that yourself. I wanna show you some simple steps to paint with Ultramarine. No, not that type. And hopefully, by the end of the video, you'll buzz off this amazing pigment as much as I do. If you enjoy it, let me know in the comments. There are loads of brands of blue model paint on the market, but before we get to all that, let me tell you a story. It happened in Holland in May 1945. The Nazis had just been defeated, and one prominent art seller was having a knock at the door. Hans von Meegren had suspiciously managed to accumulate over 33 million euros in today's money, selling rare artwork to prominent Nazis, including Hermann Goering. The knock on the door came from Dutch authorities who were accusing Mr. van Meegren of selling cultural property to the Nazis, a charge which was very serious and also strenuously denied by Mr. van Meegren. In fact, he went one step further and countered that he wasn't selling cultural property to the Nazis because all of his paintings were fakes. If anything, he should be lauded as a hero for tricking the Nazis. What he had done was spent his career recreating lost Renaissance masterpieces, including the piece in Goering's collection, Christ with the Adulteress by Vermeer. Needless to say, tricking various important art historians and collectors didn't go down too well. But Mr. Van Meegren was nothing if not resourceful. In fact, he was very clever indeed. You see, what he'd done was, in order to circumvent the aging tests that were performed on paintings of that time as a way of verifying they were genuine, was instead of using linseed as a medium, he'd used Bakelite and then cooked it in order to harden it, replicating the age of old oil paints. He also did lots of other sneaky stuff, which I've linked down in the full story below. One of those extra sneaky things was only use pigments that were available to Vermeer at the time of his life. Well, except for one and that was how he was caught. The ultramarine blue that he used to replicate some of the paintings also contained a little bit of cobalt blue, a pigment that wouldn't have existed for another 130 years post Vermeer's death. And when that was found out, the paintings hung in galleries across Europe were quietly taken down and put into storage, and Van Meegren himself was finally found guilty of forgery. Listen, at the end of the day, we're sometimes just making it up. And when we're starting with a brand new project, sometimes what we need to do is just experiment a little bit. So mess around and have fun. It's not wasted paint if you're learning. I don't end up using all the paints that I'm mixing here, but as you can see, I'm adding different colors and seeing what happens. Obviously, when I'm adding yellows to blue, I'm ending it with more green shades. When I'm adding more purples and magentas, I'm taking that blue in a more red direction. I'm not adding black and white yet because I want to try and keep the saturation in the paint. And besides, there's always a better way to highlight that involves a little bit more colour. And that in my mind makes things more interesting. What am I painting? As always, I'm painting one of these incredible busts by Ouroboros Miniatures. I wanted to set myself a challenge with this bust and paint it using only blue or variations of. I'm actually running a similar challenge over on my Discord, which is free to join if you want to jump over there. The links are down in the description below. But really what I'm doing is nothing too complicated. The hands I want to look slightly different, so I'm starting with a greener base. And then the other areas of the model I want to start a little bit different, so I'm going with a more blue tone, and then just wet blending those together. And in areas I know that are going to be in shadow, I'm just using a blue that's slightly more violet and maybe a bit darker. I'm just base coating here, so if I get it wrong, I'll just repaint it. The key thing I'm trying to achieve here is I want the warmer, brighter tones on the areas that are going to be facing upwards towards the light. The darker, cooler tones are in the shadows. See what I mean? One quick coat of paint and we're already building up a gradient. Neat, right? From this point, again, it's nice and simple. I'm just applying lighter and lighter tones of blue to the areas that are facing upwards towards the light direction. That's areas like the forehead and the bridge of the nose, but also the tops of the forearms, the hands, that sort of thing. For this video, I tried something new that I learned from Vince Venturella, which was using flesh tones to highlight blue, and it has worked incredibly well. Not only do my highlights brighten up in the way that you would expect, but they also look a little bit more interesting, more saturated, warmer, 
which is a really cool look. Thanks Vince. I've linked his video down below if you want to go and check that out. Another ridiculously basic tip, but if you want to make sure you've got your light in the right place, simply tilt your model and look in the direction of the light. Then you can tell. If you do find you've put something in the wrong place, no drama. Just go back in and glaze in a darker colour exactly where you need it to go. If that's too painterly, try this. Violet in the shadows, a zenithal over the top, and then an ultramarine sprayed over the top of that. Despite the fact that this model is over 60% dark purple, it still reads as bright blue. How crazy is that? As I've progressed along my painting journey, attending in-person classes has helped me no end. So that's why I'm really excited to be able to tell you that I'm hosting my own painting class in January of this year. The class will be taught by an incredible commission artist, that Mr Shy. His channel's linked up there. The tickets are on sale now and cost 70 pounds and you'll find the link on my website, which is linked down below. If you want more information, just drop me a message on any of my socials. Thanks. Okay, so let's talk about some of the more interesting things when it comes to blue. And for that, I'm gonna show you my lovely Frontier Wargaming painting case. Because the wonderful folks over at Frontier kindly carved my logo onto the front, and part of that logo is a color wheel. I know, I know, bear with me. And as you can see from the color wheel, these are our blues. If we want to shade with those blues, we'll move slightly down the colour wheel into our sort of our purples and our violets, which is what we've seen before. If you want to highlight with those, you move up the colour wheel into the blue-greens. But if you want to add a bit of contrast and pop, then you need to jump to the other side of the colour wheel. And then you can start playing with things like the yellows and the oranges and the reds. Be careful when you do that though, because you don't want to oversaturate your models. You really want to be picking out small details or adding individual little elements with these bits. You can definitely take it too far and it ends up looking like a Lego model instead. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is the bust we've been talking about. And you can see that these highlights here look a little bit warmer, almost as if she stood under a warm yellow sun. But when you compare that to something like this chap, which I'm still working on at the moment, I've highlighted this with white, which makes him look much colder. A bit more exaggerated with a little Battletech model, and you can see that we've picked out the various details in that bright, bright saturated yellow. Little pops of colour here and there just help bring attention to different parts of the model and make the whole thing pop. But there's no reason to really restrict yourself. If you want to try something new, try it. Inside this blue colour scheme, we've got blues, whites, greens, yellows all over the wings. We've even got a magenta coming from underneath. So you really can go crazy. It's all just about balance and that comes with practice. So to bring it right back, this is our Space Marine. And why does it work so well? Well, because blue is the most popular color in America and Europe. Therefore, people like to buy blue things. Why does the scheme work really well? Well, if you think back to that color wheel, we've got a predominantly blue color scheme shaded with a little bit of violet with our gold, which you can read as yellow, and then little red accents. Essentially, we're using that color wheel to create complementary colors that work really well together. I've actually taken things one step further on this model and you can see inside the little crackle I've got a yellow glow. It just accents that blue and helps tie everything together. So I know the Smurfs come in for a bit of flack but actually there's a good psychological reason why Games Workshop loves these little blue guys. I'm going to sign off now but not before I say thank you to everybody who supports me and joins in the chat over on my Discord but particularly to those who support me on Patreon. You know who you are, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.